Hi, Tess here. Today I had the pleasure of doing a live webinar with Zoe Black, co-founder of Happy Paws, Happy Hearts, an amazing organisation that connects socially isolated people with socially isolated animals for mutual therapy. Today we talked about some amazing techniques to shift from communicating on autopilot to empowering your communication. I hope you enjoyed the webinar as much as we did making it. See you on the other side. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are joining us from around the globe. For those of you who I have not met, my name is Tess Brooke, and thank you for joining us. Before we get started, I'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you for making these webinars so popular. We're now at 12,000 views and counting. I'm just thrilled that these are of value to you. And as always, my promise to you is that in each webinar, we will provide you with practical strategies and st steps that you can apply right away. So now to meeting our special guest. Zoe is an amazing lady, amazing CEO, and she's got a very interesting background. She's the co-founder and CEO of Happy Paws, Happy Hearts, which connects vulnerable members of society with RSPCA animals for mutual therapy. Happy Paws, Happy House was founded in 2014 and is, runs a variety of programs for the disabled, elderly and those with social isolation and need connection. Zoe has held many corporate roles including business partner manager for RSPCA. She was a chair of the board of Here For You Australia. She was chief strategy officer for another organisation and has received many honours and awards over the last few years. She has credited her success to her focus on communication and I'm delighted to have Zoe here today. Hi Zoe. Hi Zoe. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you for joining thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your experiences and your techniques with us. Um, I know you're a big fan of this actual technique and, and I'm really really looking forward to um, help, having you share the value that this brings to to others. I'm looking forward to sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let, let's move on. Okay. The challenge is we operate on autopilot. We're busy people and we go about life on autopilot. Now autopilot has served us really well. It's got us to where we are now and it will get us a long way forward as well. However, life is hectic. We're busy. We run from meeting to meeting and we rarely get the opportunity to stop and think about how to create the best outcomes for the given situations that we're in. We don't stop and think about the structure and the messaging that we need to communicate. We, we just operate on autopilot. If we think about it, air traffic controllers have a very distinct structure to their communication. They communicate tail numbers, altitude direction, takeoff time, landing time, they transfer information. Lawyers craft legal debate, they summarize cases, they create compelling arguments. They think and plan their communication structure to maximize the outcome. Football coaches do um, strategies, they design game plays and they choose their communication style to motivate their teams, their people. So why is it that we actually go about day-to-day -day conversations on autopilot when if we took a little bit of time, we could actually maximize the outcome? I'd like to share with you a personal story, a slightly embarrassing story, where I was in my early 20s and I was at actually a football game and I was right on the, the sideline, I was really close to the action and there was, I was one seat, kind of one seat behind the, the, the edge of the game and there's this guy in front of me and he's going crazy all the way through the first half and he's he was complaining about this and complaining about that. And I was getting really annoyed with him. Anyway, it, it was a very, very good game. It was hard, fair and fast. Half time came on, he turned around. I looked at him, he looked at me and I turned around to him and I said, God, I don't know what your problem is. This game is being played hard, fair and fast. It's fantastic. And he didn't say anything and he just stormed off. And my boyfriend at the time said, do you know who that was? And I went, no, that was the coach of such and such a team. And I went, right, okay. 
he didn't come back to that position after half time. Maybe, I don't know where he stayed in the box or whatever. Anyway, later that day, um, I was actually in the clubhouse having a drink and he came up to me and he said to me, you know, you obviously didn't know who I was when you said what you said at half time. But as I walked back to the sheds, I actually turned around and I thought, you know what? They're doing a really good job. I don't need to give them a spray. I'm just going. And he said to me, he said exactly what I said to him. It's a great game. Played high, fair and fast. Keep it up. Go harder. And he, so he just changed slightly my language. So he shifted from being dictatorial and giving them um, direction to letting them have the autonomy to run with the combat, run with their with their game. And so we had a bit of a laugh and we had another drink. So he did a shift. He did a shift where he took a moment to think about what approach he wants to have at, in that conversation. And so I'd like to call that the big shift. So today we're going to take you through a couple of stages that are required for this big shift. Okay, but first the problem is our autopilot controls our language, our focus and our expectations. We don't stop to consider our communication style and approach. Consequently, we become predictable. Others who we interact with will know what we're going to say, know how we're going to behave. And we all consequently switch off a little bit. And then we start repeating and repeating and repeating these habits, repeating these patterns. So the solution is we plan to prepare. We create clarity around our message and we choose our communication style. So when we plan to prepare, we need to do it on three levels. We need to book time with ourselves to give us that opportunity to reflect. We look forward at the week. We look forward what are the significant conversations that, are, that happen. We, and we, the benefits of doing that is we can start to actually relax. So the week gets a little bit less manic. We get a little bit more organized in our head. And we, for me, it starts to put my mind at ease if I know, well, okay, Tuesday, I've got this really important conversation. And on Thursday, I've got this important meeting. Uh, okay, yeah, I know I need to sort of organize myself, organize myself a little bit more. And then it helps us to start thinking about what the messaging needs to be. So I know Zoe is amazing at this technique and this strategy, which is why I invited her to join us. She is phenomenal at organizing and planning to craft her message um, perfectly for the significant conversations or the challenging interactions or the, or the necessary conversations. So, and Zoe's life is, with this new foundation and it's also added another level of complexity she's now got a little 18 month old that keeps her very very busy so zoe i'd like to open up to you and talk to us about how you go about your planning to prepare yeah thanks jess you forgot that i also add regular animals into the mix as well in my own home um, so yes <laughs> yes Plus many um, many animals so, <laughs> yeah it is a busy life uh, and and, you know, I think the important thing is that wherever you are, you go there with your best intention to be present for those around you. In my case, that's both people and uh, rescue animals at times that I need to be present for. Um, so for me, now that I do have both a busy household and a busy work life, uh, one of the techniques I employ is to uh, dedicate some time on Sunday night, my me time, uh, which uh, starts with a shower and just to get a bit personal. Um, and, and that's where I can sort of think about the week ahead, which important conversations I'm going to have uh, and I guess what uh, assumptions other people might be bringing into those conversations. And uh, I also, on a regular basis, also make sure that within my own calendar, I'm controlling at least the 15 minutes before I go into those important meetings, um, 15 minutes to half an hour, if I can block that out, just to make sure I am present and reflecting on what I have spent time reflecting on in that Sunday night uh, me time. 
The, the other thing I do, I found since moving into the foundation, we have an open plan office. And I know this is a challenge for a lot of people because the second you walk into your offices, you're often uh, then confronted with a lot of people who want to touch base before they, they go off into their own sessions or meetings. Uh, so my, you know, I have a, a short car ride to work. Um, but that for me is good thinking time ahead of the morning because I know that the second I get into that office, um, I, I need to be present with those people immediately. And the work that you do, Zoe, you bring in how many um, people would come through and be a part in a week for you? Yes, yeah, so we would see uh, about 100. 110 uh, individuals every single week um, just in one of our streams of work uh, and then we work with um, veterans with PTSD, um, uh, other isolated people through specialist courses on top of that uh, and then of course we add that extra challenge of working with rescue animals at the shelter so within every session we might work with five to six different rescue animals. Uh, it's, it's interesting because you know, the rescue animals won't be, the animals won't be moderating their responses as much as say a human can. Um, and so you're probably getting a very honest reaction from some of them as well, if you're not present with them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things about working with animals. It tells you a lot about your own body language um, and how to read their language in return. And I love how you go about training your um, volunteers and, and the people who want to become trainers within your program and, and you teach them how to be pre prepared and how to be present in those moments. And it, it's skills that reflect not only for working with the animals, but the skills that they actually take away with them in their life. Yeah, absolutely. And we've actually built in time to our trainers' calendars so they do exactly that. They have that preparation time and they have that post-session time to reflect on exactly what happened with the participants uh, and how they're going to move forward and progress everyone's lives. It's awesome. It's absolutely incredible what you do and I love how you apply this to, to get the benefit of the outcome. Often... Um, like in the corporate world, we feel like we're being dragged and dragged from meeting to meeting and we, we feel like we can't escape from that merry-go-round. And there's an element of giving ourselves permission to take that little bit of time out of the calendar so that you can do it. But it also can be as simple as if you just check in with what you need to pay attention to, it can be as simple as just having that pattern interrupt to what you're doing and getting up and going and getting a glass of water or going for a walk around the block, maybe going, um, you know, if there's a nice cafe nearby, going and getting a, a takeaway coffee and using that walking time just to sort of like prepare for the next meeting, prepare. And it does, a combination of things gives you just that little bit of exercise, it separates you from what you were doing and helps put you in the present for moving forward. Um, so, we start out with having to plan to prepare and we, we look at it on a weekly basis so we can look ahead and we, we try and have a glimpse at it on a daily basis and then we lock away as required that a little bit of time for those significant meetings on uh, as required. But the next step is to create clarity. So with the clarity, um, it's sometimes we've just got so much noise in our head and when we, we rush, and we we need to be able to learn to distill what's important and i'm going to flip back to zoe um to to talk to this yeah absolutely i mean this is this is key for me because time i guess is such a commodity now and being busy is kind of the message we hear from absolutely everyone so in your communication i always encourage um my team and obviously I reflect this myself to be on purpose and, and know what outcomes we want from conversations and meetings. Oh, absolutely and and in doing that once we know what the purpose is we, we can cut out the noise that sits around it. We often use a conversation or meeting as an opportunity to cover everything off that you want to cover off with that particular person in one hit 
and sometimes you dilute the message you um, take away from the single most important thing that you need to uh, discuss with them and your message gets lost in noise the outcomes get lost in noise so one of the important things is once you've distilled that down to what the the purpose is of your communication is to reflect on but well, what are your needs for this what are so the other person's needs or the team's needs for this to be able to achieve the overall bigger picture the outcome that you want so it, when we're rushing it's very easy to think about our needs and we go oh you must do blah 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 blah. i need this from you by end of the week and we forget to pay attention to what's going on for the other person or what their team might need and oh well we can't do this until blah 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 so in that moment of your preparation to take the time to think about what your needs are what you think their needs might be and what the overall needs for the organization are and in doing that that shifts your language from i and you to in order to achieve this our team needs to do this and what does your team it shifts to um it's less personalized and it's more outcome focused So then we move on to choosing your communication style. This is something that I love. And again, it's something I know Zoe just does beautifully. So Zoe, do you want to say something to this? Yeah, oh, look, I just want to say that this is probably the area I spend a lot of time thinking about and uh, trying to understand both the situation and the audience uh, that I'm working with. The situation um, might be one where I'm bringing a message of compliance, particularly when we're working with vulnerable people and the importance of that compliance, and I have no room to really negotiate in, in certain situations, uh, right through to open, innovative discussions where there's full room for us to design uh, the next phase of this organisation or the next phase of our program. So, you know, that's a situational analysis uh, that I'll do to know um, exactly what kind of style of communication we're going to be moving forward with. And then when it comes to, I guess, the audience, People have different focuses and different things that motivate them. You know, I particularly think about the different uh, personalities I have in my team and also lots of stakeholders take an interest in what we do, external stakeholders. Um, so getting to know them better is really important. If, for example, I had a major change I was driving through, I might have a narration of up to maybe six different stories for different focuses that people might have. Um, and as I get to learn about their higher purpose and their why, that's what I can bring to that change to move it forward. It's, it's very, very interesting. One of the things around communicating, or choosing your communication style is we, because we operate on autopilot, we tend to default in different contexts to a certain style. And what we need to do is go, well, is that style the optimum style for to get the outcomes that we need? And we tend to can have connections to particular styles on, in certain contexts. So are we connected? Is the control of how they're getting there more important to us? Or is the outcome more important? Or is it an ability to influence that's more important? But when we op on auto, operate on autopilot, we actually don't stop to think about that. So what I'm going to show you next is what is, this is going to be your bonus, which you'll receive um, later. But this will help you as you reflect on what is the best style for you in the context of the situation. So it's, um, so which communication style is your autopilot most connected to and why? And we've got on the left hand side, we, we've got a more direct style, which is really around the control focus and whether it's a command or to inform on the right hand side, it's very much around enabling and empowering. And it could in include collaborating, empowering, and then in the middle, much more around the influence. But each one of these styles has a particular goal and they also have as a consequence of it, it will then have a slightly different um, language you'll use or slightly different structure that you'll go about communicating. But being able to sort of go, okay, well, 
what's going to be the best style for me? Would it be motivating or encouraging or a supporting style? Or do I need to um, be a little, put a little bit of boundary around it and say, okay, we need this change. We're going to coach. For so you go coach for change, create the awareness, create the expectations of the change. You know, what style? Or is it, okay, this is happening and this is why it's happening. So being able to have this as a reference um, will really help you sort of take that next step and go, instead of that blank to, oh, what style should I have? Um, be able to look at it and sort of go, well, which one do you think will work best for the situation? So I know you're a fan of this type of um, reflection, this type of um, consideration. What are your thoughts on having a style guide? Yeah, I love this breakdown um, and it sort of puts puts down, I guess, a structure for you to look at when you're doing your sort of weekly look in advance um, at the different key conversations you're going to have. Um, and I, I like that, you know, you have an opportunity here to reflect on what is your autopilot because I definitely, my autopilot is to go to enable and empower, um, you know, trying to build a flu fluid, innovative organisation. But as I said earlier, there are situations um, where we are working with vulnerable people and vulnerable animals and it's a compliance information um, approach that is taken to some uh, meetings. So this almost sets you up to even start the meeting with being really authentic about, you know, in a situation situation where it is command or information where you can say well team you know I, I like to always have conversations which are enabling and empowering um, in this situation I, this particular part of the meeting is just informing you it's informing you about why we are proceeding in this way um, and giving you some information so you can understand the decision we're taking forward And if anybody's got any questions, feel free to pop them in the, the question box and we're happy, happy to answer them. Sometimes you you can use these um, communication style in a series of steps. And so sometimes, um, you know, I might go down a path of empower and and then over, over a period of time, you know, things might not be working out how they, they should. So you, you well, as a manager, you may need to work with people on changes around their behaviour. So you could start with you know, a coaching for awareness style conversation. And then that, that could sound like, so are you aware you're doing this? Um, and you let that person um, reflect and respond. And, you know, what do you think you could do about it? So you're still empowering them to consider a different way of going about something. And if things can continue to go down a path that's not really turning around some of that behaviour, you can move on to a, a coach for change. And it, it could sound like, oh, you know, it appears you're struggling with blah, blah, blah. So whatever action they had agreed to previously. And so um, is there something we can help you with? We really need to see changes in this area. So you can start to be a little bit more specific and influence that. Um, and say, okay, what I'd like to see, and you can be a little bit more direct in that way. And then, and then if it continues, then you can go down to a bit more of a more rigid approach and going, okay, well, I need to inform you. If we don't see change, we're going to need to commence a, a formal process. So sometimes these styles of conversations become a series of conversations, and the the language becomes a thread through, but and they follow a sequence, but they belong together. They, they support each other and people aren't surprised when, when they get the common message and the common message could be, well, we require an outcome of this and we'd like to see this change along those kinds of lines, if that makes sense. Um, so, so we have a, the, we've given you three three things we've given you the um, plan to prepare creating clarity and choosing your communication style and that combination becomes really really powerful it's it's important to remember that you're not going to change everything overnight and I would start picking one situation that you would actually like to 
one situation, one context, one meeting, that you'd like to explore something different. If you try and do it on everything, you're just going to exhaust yourself. But pick one, test it, see how it goes, refine a little bit more, and then start to, to broaden that. But the good news is too, that you don't have to do this alone. We can actually help you. We can go for a deeper dive and we have this fantastic course that will actually give you a number of skills along this to help you really make that shift from autopilot to empowered communication. The course itself actually has three sections and the first section covers what are your triggers? What do you respond to? What do you react to that get in the road of you having these effective conversations? It covers the planning to prepare and setting yourself up to empower your communication. So that's in the first section. The second section covers eight strategies for different situations. It covers dealing with negative people, roadblocks, people going off on tangents at meetings. It covers a variety of strategies for different situations. And it includes scripts that you can actually swipe and deploy, make them your own and use them. So you don't have to think, oh, how would I go about handling this? You've got those scripts there to, to just tweak and put a little bit into your own language, but they just make life much, much simpler. And from there, um, the third section is, like, okay, well, what stops us from getting there? What stops us, what holds us back um, from tackling those necessary conversations? What from making those changes, those incremental changes, and we work on a strategy for you over the next few weeks. So the course is actually amazing. It's 10 modules, you get 10, 10 lessons, you get a daily challenge, videos, bonuses. But some of the real value comes from not only working those lessons in your, the privacy of your own space, and it's not someone saying, Oh, you do this, you need to change that. You can, you can actually tweak it privately and make it work for you. The lessons can be done in, on average, about 15 minutes a day. So again, with, it's not putting a big effort on your, your daily demands or your demands in your life. And if you've done the course, you can join our private Facebook group called The Trouble With Talking. And you can post your questions in there and you can get support from myself and, and the community and you'll also have access to live q a sessions so we help you on this journey of shifting from autopilot to empowered communications zoe what are your thoughts on the course yeah i just think it's so valuable and, and as you say it's what 15 minutes investing in yourself um that's you know less than my personal trainer expects of me <laughs> uh, let me check I need far more um, assistance in the workplace than, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's that's an amazing investment in yourself to just spend that time reflecting and, and as you say, adjusting things um, privately, you know, getting that in heightened awareness and then a community as a bonus. And it is really about that investment in yourself. And it, this, to me, is one of the most affordable courses available on the market. It's uh, $297. And a lot of the courses nowadays, when you don't have the, the detailed workbooks that, that you have and the opportunities to really work through this, nor do you have the access to the, the Facebook community and the, the live Q&A sessions. So it's all about your professional development and, and supporting you on that journey. So in terms of being able to move forward and, and that next step, you you have a choice of requesting from me more information about the, the course. You can jump online and sign up now. Or you can look for the next webinar and, and where we'll be tackling the responding versus reacting, exploring how to monitor your triggers and put strategies around your triggers. So unless we've got any questions, and do you have any closing comments, Zoe? No, I just wanted to say thank you for inviting me along. I really um, enjoyed just sharing some of the techniques I use on a, a weekly and daily basis, but happy to um, answer questions afterwards if everyone wants, anyone wants to reach out to me through Happy Paws, Happy Hearts. I'm, I'm always open to new connections. 
that. And I have um, loved having you here, Zoe. It's uh, yet another Zoe and Tess collaboration. For those, um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, um, Zoe and I, how long have we known each other now? Do we, yeah, over a decade. It's over a decade, Tess. <laughs> Yeah, so how we actually met, I was actually recruiting and I couldn't find anybody who had the skills that I needed. And a lady in the company said to me, I have this person, I'd love to put her on, but I don't have a place at the moment. But she doesn't have exactly the skills you're looking for, but she's got the aptitude that you need. And so I interviewed Zoe and she was a communication undergraduate at the time. And she started working for me about a week later, I think. And so we ended up working together for a number of years. And then when I left that role, she actually took over the role from me. And then since then, she has engaged me to do work with her and her teams, and I've engaged her to do work with me. So we've got this ongoing relationship that's just been magic. So Yeah, it's been wonderful. I'll send you a follow-up email with the, the bonus download on your communication style guide and some information on how to move forward and if you're interested in doing the course. So thank you, Zoe, and thank Thanks, you everybody Dad. for joining us. Have a good day.